Hello, YouTubers. Welcome to my Nasdaq YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft Thread Modeling Tool Stride to do a quick web application thread modeling. And also, we're going to generate a nice report. We will not covering much about the theory. If you want to know that, you can check my blog post security modeling and the threat modeling resources to find out more theory. In this video, I'm going to more covering a practice how to use step-by-step -step approach to design your threat modeling with a simple web application. You can check all steps from this blog post. Hopefully, after watching this video, you can start to execute your own threat modeling for your own applications. If you have any questions, please leave it at this video description below. I will respond it as much as I can. Now, let's start it. As we can see from Microsoft Threat Modeling Tool page, there are lots of steps shows here, download and read the guide. So we're going to start to quickly read this thread modeling tool guide. So basically there are four steps here, diagram, identify, mitigate and validate. So that's from Microsoft document, four step process. If you look at the OWASP modeling process, you will see three steps. From the OWASP thread modeling project, there are four questions will be asked. What are we building? What can go wrong? What are we going to do about that? Did we do a good enough job? Actually, those four questions can be mapped into those four step cycle process, which I can map to this four step process. Step one, diagram, which answering what are we building? Identify what can go wrong. Mitigate what are we going to do about it. Validate did we do a good job. We're going to use Microsoft Threatly Modeling Tool. Stride to finish those four steps using our sample web application example. Let's start from downloading the Strat Modeling Tool. Downloading and launch the set modeling tool stride is very simple. Click link, click open, click OK. Just open it. Then install. It's 10 megabytes, probably take um, two minutes. You can download it and then it will be launched. Microsoft Threat Modeling Tool. You get this Microsoft Software License Terms. Agree. Do you want to help? Yeah, let's start it. So this is a kind of dashboard to show you the tasks we can do. You can create a model, open it. You can read Getting Start Guide. If you are not happy with those three templates, you can download it from the GitHub Microsoft Thread Modeling Tool page and then download the more template or you can create your own. As shown in my blog post, I'm using a typical simple web server application as an example. So there are three components. We have client, talk to your web server using HTTP or HTTPS, mostly will be HTTPS through a browser. And your web server, talk to your backend database, MS SQL server using TCP 1433. So we're gonna using this as an example to do the threat modeling. So we're gonna create a model. We're gonna use an SDLTM knowledge base is core 4.1.0 template 
to create a module. Click on it. On your right side, you will see a lot of stencils that we're gonna use. So we're gonna map in the component we have in our diagram to our thread modeling. So we have database. So we have SQL database. We're gonna put in here. That's our SQL database. As our data store. We also have our web server, so web service. We can put in here as well. Now we have our client, which usually is a human user. After we have those three major components, we can create our process data flow. As you can see, generic data flow listing HTTPS, HTTP over here. So to make it simple, we're just using HTTPS since that's what most people are using. We're going to create a HTTPS and we're going to connect from the his human user to our web server. That will be our request. So human user made a request and then we're going to have a, another data flow come back. Web service going to respond back to the human user. So we're going to create another data flow, which is coming from our web service back to our human user. gonna say it web response. Now when we made the HTTPS request web service may need to generate a SQL request. So we can put uh, another generic data flow here which is we call it data base request we have request of course we have response connect those dot we say database response Another thing we also can do is we can define the element properties. For example, for our SQL database, we can define do we store credentials? Yeah, maybe if we have a login process to verify, store a username. Yeah, let's put yes here. Store log data, we can change it. Is data encrypted? Well, most likely yes. Signed, maybe not. Write access, yeah, because they need to write things in there. Is a removable, maybe not. Do we have a backup? Yes. Shared, let's say no. You also can add some new custom attributes here. For a web service, same thing. We can run it as what kind of system service isolating level maybe it's a low integrity level accept input from remote users because this is human user from internet do we implement any authentication mechanism yes we need to verify users account Authorization, of course, as well. Communication protocols, HTTPS. Sentinel input, of course. Sentinel output, maybe no. For a human user, probably not much. 
that's a basic data flow. But before we starting analysis, we need to create some boundaries as well. So there was uh, some generic trust line boundary, for example, internet boundary. So the human user. Gonna use an internet to accessing our web service. So there's an internet boundary here. Uh, also, we can create uh, another trust boundary for our web service and the SQL database. So they may sit in the same cloud data center and they have same trust for those two components. So we can put them together. Or you also maybe can isolate it and using some network segregation to make it simple and just put that generic trust board boundary here. That should give us enough information for this simple web application, how it works. So now we have our basic simple DFD data flow diagram. There are lots of customization you can do on each process as well. So we did some customization on element, data store, web service, human user. You also can do on a process. For a database request, is it a physical network? Probably not. Source authenticated, maybe yes. Destination authenticated, maybe yes. Provide confidentiality, yes. Integrity, yes. Contains cookie, maybe not. So all those things can be customized here. HTTPS, yes, yes. Physical network, source authenticated. Contains cookie, yes. So once you finish your customization, then you can identify the threads. How are we gonna do that? We can uh, save this first let's save this thread model first then we can click the view menu so we're gonna use analysis view to see the thread so for example for https we can see there's a thread called a spoofing a human user external entity spoofing human user might be spoofed by an attacker. So HTTPS has those two, and database request has this. HTTPS actually has more. So basically for those four processes, you will see the potential risk here, and it will tell you what it is and give you a description. Now we have the list of the threads. Um, the easy way to get it is uh, to create a report. You can create a full report, generate it, and save it. And then you will get this nice report to show your thread. How are we going to mitigate it? So let's give it some example HTTPS. Here is a spoofing. So since we implemented uh, authentication in our web service, so we do have authentication process which can prevent in spoofing. So we can put some justification here and then we can change the status to mitigate it. And the priority, you may want to put it low so then we done one. And then the second one is the elevation of the privilege. Same thing, we have implemented a role-based access control in our web service, web application. So which is preventing to elevate of your privilege? So we can say mitigate it, change it. It's been resolved. That's how you're going to do it one by one. At the same time, you may run this threat modeling to all your team members 
or related uh, stuff to talk about it, let people brainstorm it. Because we may have another thread which is not mentioned here, but probably related to your environment. So then you need to add it in as a one of identify thread and then find out the mitigation. Once you completed um, all threat investigation and the mitigation, then you may want to regenerate your report again to create a full report, generate it and to take a look at how much threat we have and how many finish. So we can see we have one not started, three not applicable, and one is need investigation, but we did uh, 19 mitigation. So that's pretty good. So we are almost done for this threat modeling. And we identified all threats. We put um, the interaction for each threat we identified, either mitigated or put it um, on the investigation or not applicable or not started. So there's four status you can pick. So in any of time, if you want to change your design, you can go back to design view mode and you can modify your diagram. And you can also change your shape size so one issue I found is uh, there's one time uh, so I found that the shape couldn't be changed for some reason. Actually, the result is simple. I just closed it and reopened it, and then it automatically fixed the issue. As said, this is very simple web application. There's lots of other components we can put it on. So we can put like browser client here, so which human user going to use a browse client and we also can add cache of our web service so which can make our system more efficient to run for the web service respond much faster and we also maybe have cookies for the browser browser has cookies in saved in local file You may also have a local file system on your web service. So for all those things, you can add it in. So once you add it in, just put the, the data flow between those components so we can generate it, the threads for those flows. So we just did a very simple web application thread modeling. If you look at my blog post, there's uh, lots of other complicated example shows here for your reference. Um, so it can be very complicated and lots of components added in. And also those can be a good example for you to develop your slide modeling. So that's pretty much everything I want to cover in this video. Hopefully you get some useful information from here. If you like it, as usual, please give me a thumb up or subscribe my channel. If you haven't, hit the bell button to get a notification when I have a new videos released. Thank you for watching. See you in my next video.